Good morning, folks. So this is uh, I'm Jonathan Anubahu, and with me I have my colleague uh, Harsha Kumar. So today we'll be presenting about how how you can deploy WC2 API Manager and deploy your API for high availability and scalability. So a brief introduction to the presenters. So I myself, Chanak Vanabahu, I'm Associate Technical Leader WSO2. So my main focus is WSO2 API Manager and in the past I have contributed to WSO2 Governance Registry and WSO2 Effective Projects. And my colleague Harsha, uh, he's a software engineer and he's primarily uh, working on um, WSO2 API Manager. And um, during his uh, bachelor's degree, uh, he is interested in uh, distributed systems, web services and SQL databases for businesses and also data mining applications. So before going into detail, uh, let me give you a quick introduction into what we are going to cover from this webinar. So first of all, we are going to give you a brief introduction to WC2 API Manager. Then uh, we'll be uh, giving an overview of the WC2 API Manager components and how, how you can break down the uh, server into the, uh, various components. Then uh, there will be uh, a, a set of uh, uh, slides about the integration of these components, uh, uh, how each component talks to each other and at what point. Then uh, we'll be uh, uh, talking about the deployment patterns of API Manager. Uh, mainly we are going to focus on the standalone deployment, the fully distributed deployment, and the fully distributed deployment with the cluster for each nodes. And finally, we'll be having a question and answer session. So first of all, what is WC2 API Manager? So before giving you an introduction to WC2 API Manager, first let's see what kind of business use case it's going to address. So in modern society, in modern world, if as an organization which implements a service of internet architecture, there are many benefits in exposing your APIs uh, to external parties or other internal projects. So, but in doing so, you, the, the organization will be facing a lot of difficulties in uh, managing the version or uh, doing the lifecycle management or adding this, doing the security of these APIs. But WC2 API Manager does is, it actually helps you to manage all of these operations using the WC platform. So if I go into a, a, the feature breakdown, so WC2 API Manager has, has the capability of doing API creation which uh, and helps you to create APIs with ease. Then there's the um, API publications, then API lifecycle management which uh, it underneath it uses the WC2 governance registries lifecycle capabilities. Then uh, it supports API versioning, API monetization, and different security protocols based on your need. So how WC2 API Manager does this is that we have a, a platform and there are various components in our platform and WC2 API Manager leverages these capabilities of the WC2 Enterprise Service Bus to do the uh, message uh, to, to do the API exposure and message mediation, then it uses the capabilities of the WC2 Identity Server to grant security access. Then it uses the WC2 Governance Registry to do the lifecycle management and metadata storage. Then it uses the WC2 Data Analytics Server for the analytics of the APIs, like this, how many APIs have have been invoked and how many subscriptions are there? Like, like with different statistics about the about the APIs you have deployed. So, now, if you have tried out W3 API Manager, you you would notice that it comes as a single package, a, a single binary distribution, and you you might not notice that uh, we have several components packed together in the single distribution. So the API Manager is actually a collection of four main components. 
one is the API store where API consumers can self-register and discover all the APIs that's been published in, in there and they can actually subscribe to the APIs. They can evaluate and then if, if they want they, they can like interact with the API publishers also from using the API store. Then you have the API publisher, the component where you use to pu publish all the APIs. So the API providing users would access the API publisher, create the APIs, create the documentation and gather feedback on the API function uh, features and uh, quality and the usages. Then there are two components that tr runs uh, underneath. One is the API gateway, the component which is which is accepting all the uh, API requests that's coming and this component is is responsible for securing and uh, scaling API calls. So it's actually a simple API proxy that that handles your API, that handles the API request and do the security and all the uh, uh, message mediations that are defined. The final component is the API key manager. This uh, component is responsible for all the security and key related operations. And uh, when an API call is sent to the API gateway, API gateway then call the API key manager server to validate the token. And <coughs> if validated, the API gateway will uh, proceed with the uh, API request flow. So now you might be wondering how uh, these components uh, interact with each other. So now in our carbon platform we have a set of uh, data storage uh, data storages. Now API manager has uh, is using few of those as well. So that's the API manager database which actually uh, stores all the information related to the APIs and uh, some of the runtime information of the APIs. Then there's the user management database, which is actually coming from uh, our carbon core, which stores all the uh, user-related uh, data, like the usernames, user roles, and this database is actually shared among the key manager and store publisher. Then we have the registry database. The registry database is uh, it's actually coming again from the carbon core, and um, it's used to store all the metadata about the API and uh, other information like the um, uh, throttling XMLs and uh, or, or some of the uh, meta configurations also related to API manager deployment. So all, all these different carbon databases are embedded in the API manager binary distribution and the default distribution has all the tables necessary uh, for registry and user management and all these uh, API management databases. So now let's take a look at how these components interact with each other. So now um, we ha we have four components, as I mentioned earlier. We have the store, we have the publisher, we have the gateway, and then we have the key manager. Now then I get, then I explain that we have three main databases, the API management database, the register database, and the user store. Could be a database or an LF. So if you take the API publisher, API publisher actually, uh, when, P, when API publishers publish an API, it actually um, interacts with the API management database uh, and the register database, and it also publishes the uh, API artifact to the gateway. So I'll actually go into if each of these different flows later during the presentation. So uh, and next let's take a look at the API store. So what API store does is it actually looks at the registry database to find out all the published APIs. It actually looks at the API management database to get some runtime information about the API and both the store and the publisher connects to the user store 
so that uh, only authenticated users can access and subscribe to the APIs. The next component is the API Gateway. The API Gateway does not interact with any of the databases mentioned in here. It, the only interaction the API Gateway has is with the key manager to validate the uh, tokens that's been sent in the request. And if you look at the API Key Manager, the API Key Manager actually connects the user store to validate the uh, uh, to, to to validate the uh, tokens, and it also uh, connects to the API Management Database to get some information related to the token validation. So that's a high level overview of how each of these components interact with each other. And now we'll actually go into more detail about how uh, each of the flows uh, would work. So first of all, we look at the API publisher flow. When an API publisher comes, uh, he will directly interact with the uh, API publisher component and when you fill, on, fill in all the details of an API, the next option would be to save that API. When an API is saved, that uh, the API publisher will save a set of metadata in the registry database. So if you look at the purple color arrows, you will see that when an API publisher publishes the API, it will push some data into the registry and also there will be an um, API artifact which is a Synapse API artifact which will be pushed into the API gateway. And some of the metadata information they will be accessed through the API store. So that's the main flow of the API publisher uh, with, and the interaction of these components when publishing an API. Now let's look at the API subscriber flow. When an API subscriber comes, what he does is he will log into the API store and then he will uh, do a subscription. Uh, he, he will actually subscribe to an API. When when the API subscriber logs into the store, it uh, the API store component it will look at the registry database and the API management database and get all the information related to the currently published APIs in the system. And the API subscriber can choose one of these APIs and then click on subscribe. Then he, the subscriber has the option of doing a token generation. And if, if he chooses to generate the token, then the store component, component will do a call to the key manager and get the uh, access tokens and the other related information of the token generation request. So this is the basic interaction of the components in the API subscriber flow. Now let's look at the API invocation flow. In the API invocation flow, an API subscriber will call the API gateway with the token he generated from the API store and the API gateway it will do a token validation request to the key, API key manager and the key manager component will uh, validate the token and send the response to the gateway and if the token is a valid token the gateway would uh, uh, pass the request and the request would go to the uh, backend service that's been uh, exposed to get to the API and the response would come to the gateway and back to the subscriber. So in this flow the gateway will only interact with the API key manager during the API invocation and there's no interaction between the API publisher and the store. So now that's the uh, basic uh, uh, flows of each of the uh, main operations in the API manager and the different uh, um, components uh, how they interact with, with each other during these flows. Now I will actually start on 
um, the API management deployment patterns. So the first deployment pattern is the standalone mode deployment. So and standalone mode deployment means you will get the vanilla API manager pack and uh, you will run it as it is with all the components bundled into, into a single distribution. So you will have the API publisher, API store, API gateway and API key manager running in the same Java virtual machine. And in this standalone mode deployment, so normally we have two set of uh, transports. One is to connect to the management console or the publish and store application and the um, uh, other transport is to uh, get the API uh, request call to, to the gateway. So this mode is normally used in small deployment where there is no need of uh, doing uh, uh, fully distributed deployments with all the components in a separate VM, Java virtual machine or in uh, in uh, private deployments where there is where folks are not um, expecting a lot of load to the API gateway or to the API publisher store. So this is the basic mode of uh, this is the basic mode of doing the uh, deployment, uh, doing a standalone deployment uh, for a environment, for a, for if there's a requirement to handle a very limited number of API calls. So if you are going to handle a large number of concurrent requests using the API manager, the ideal solution would be to have a fully distributed deployment. Now in this fully distributed deployment, all the different API manager components will be running on different Java, Java virtual machines and most probably in different different uh, virtual machines or uh, different nodes. So in here what you would have is you have an API publisher which is running as a different node and there will be API store which is running as a different node and likewise API gateway and API key manager and each of these uh, different stakeholders like the API publisher or API subscriber they will interact with only the required node and all the communication ha will happen to uh, service calls within the components and to uh, database interaction. So this is uh, this is the basics of the fully distributed deployment and I will hand over the presentation to my colleague Hasha to continue with the uh, uh, clustering and all the high availability and scalability of this uh, fully distributed deployment pattern. Um, thank you Chandra. So I think you guys now uh, have understand about the different components of API manager. So I will move forward with the clustering and high availability and the scalability. So when we need the high availability and scalability, we often refer to the terms like clustering and uh, load balancing. So if, when you need scaling, you will add up more nodes into the cluster and the, in the LB level, LB have the auto discovery uh, on the newly added nodes and it will scale up and scale down depending on the network load and traffic. So when you need high availability, we normally go to the active passive configuration where um, active nodes always serve the traffic when it went down, the load balancer will configure to route traffic to the passive node. So that's how you normally achieve your availability and scalability requirements. So <coughs> in uh, API manager, we have the several components, store, publisher, gateways and key manager. So I'm talking about now is the store clustering. The store is the place where users comes and subscribe to APIs. Some there might be requirements where you will increase the load to store and you need to scale up. So at that time store clustering you will need to have store clustering. 
enabling in clustering in WSL product is very easy. So <coughs> like that, store uh, enabling clustering store node is just a single configuration. So and uh, if you need high availability, you will have two store nodes in active passive mode, and in LB level you can configure uh, what is the active node and what is the passive node. So it's very easy to uh, configure the store clustering. So when we go into the gateways and key manager, it will go both together because <coughs> when you scale up gateways, you will definitely need to scale up the key managers because increase of traffic means you will have more key validation calls, which means you need to increase more nodes in the key manager as well. <coughs> so if I uh, go to the key manager cluster, you can see in the uh, diagram, key manager is say, cluster is same as the store cluster. You have multiple nodes and enable the clustering and forward with the LB. So you can have both high availability and scalability capabilities in there. But if you <coughs> want to cluster the gateway, we need to follow this pattern where we have the gateway manager and gateway workers. Because when the API is publishing, there's an API artifact which need to be synced with all the gateway nodes. In WSU, we use SVN deployment synchronizer to sync these API artifacts. What happens in this deployment is publisher will first publish to the gateway manager. Manager is the person who handles this um, sync up. So when the API is published to the gateway manager, it will write to the SVN repository and send the custom message to all the nodes saying that there's a new update on this repository. When the gateway workers receive this custom message, they will do a SVN up and take the, all the necessary uh, updates from the SVN repository and it will automatically deploy in the gateway workers. It's very simple and uh, highly scalable. So if you need more servers, workers, you can simply add and let LB2 know that there will be new servers added so it will be scale up. So this is the gateway and key manager cluster. So this is the full cluster diagram where you will have a gateway cluster, key manager cluster and store cluster. So you can have cluster domains in the store, you can have a separate cluster domain, key manager, it will can be have a in a separate cluster domain and gateway have in gateway cluster domain. There's no need to uh, overlap those cluster domains. Uh, this is the full deployment and I'm now going to the multi-zone deployment. So multi-zone de deployments where people need security. So people don't need to don't need to expose their security and uh, user management and the API publishing things to the external internet because it's a secure risk. So what it needs is to expose the store and the gateways to the public. There are public uh, people will come to the store and subscribe to APIs and use it through the gateways. <coughs> and all the key validation and the user management and the API publishing parts will be handled in the material zones, so we are, there's no internet access to that to the zone. So only the material zone will be have the internet access. This is the multi-zone deployment. If you need to move the store into the material zone, you can do it very easily and let gateway nodes to be in the material zone. So when we come to the scaling, the scaling <coughs> is one more important uh, comparing to the H high availability. Both are both are needed to the in the deployment. So when it comes to the scaling, you will need to scale up and scale down depending on your network traffic. There are two ways of how you can scale up. There's horizontally scaling and vertically scaling. In horizontally scaling what we do is we will add more nodes to the cluster. When there's a high traffic, we will add more nodes and let those nodes to handle the load. And if there's load is down, the number of nodes will be decreased and it will adjust to, to serve this traffic. So horizontally scaling is in the gateway, 
like you will add the new gateway and let tell me know that there's a new node so it will route the traffic to the that node as well. So scaling vertical achieve through the increase in the computer power. If you have HGB RAM machine, you will increase it to 16 GB and so it will can do more processing. That's a vertical scale. So scale horizontally is mostly done in gateways and key managers. So because some period, sometimes you will have increase of traffic where you need to increase the number of nodes to serve those things. So you will do horizontal scale in gateways and key manager nodes. So load balance should be capable of detecting those newly added servers and serve the traffic to the newly added servers with configured algorithms. So this is a mostly widely used pattern for scaling horizontally. And also this is applicable for all the gateways, key managers and publishers. This is a very popular way of scaling horizontally. So this is the normal demonstration diagram. So it, first you will have one node which will serve 500 requests. But if you added four nodes, you can serve 2000 requests per second. So when it comes to the scale vertically, you will add more computing power to the machine. So it will handle more processing. So there are in API manager, we have API facade pattern. They are API manager server will handle only the uh, me uh, the um, service chaining part and the message formatting. So the mostly most complex things and time consuming things like transformation, mediation will be moved to the ESB or some mediation layer. So you will have more powerful machines in that mediation layer. So it will do the mediation and API manager have more resources to do the service chaining and the formatting stuff. So that is the vertical scale up. So you can do it like adding more resources and using the API facade pattern. So this is the, this is the our end of our presentation. If you have any questions and clarification, please let us know. So um, folks, if you have any questions, please send it through chat and uh, we'll be looking at those questions and we'll be answering these questions uh, during this time frame. So if you have any questions, we are open to take any questions. Okay, so we have a question. So the first question is like, can I run the service on an ARM computer? So the API manager distribution and all of its components are based on Java. So if you can run a Java virtual machine in a in an environment, you can actually uh, run an API manager in there. But normally, uh, what we require is we require at least minimum 1 GB of uh, RAM in order to uh, achieve uh, uh, a, a decent amount of request and uh, normally uh, if, if you can have that hardware requirement then API manager can, uh, can run on that computer and based on the deployment pattern any of the uh, components such as the gateway or uh, most of the gateway and the other components they can se be separated out and then uh, could be could run on, on 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 such a computer so and so there's another question uh, the question would be, uh, uh, can you configure for automatic horizontal scaling? So, uh, actually, um, we can do that because uh, when you scale horizontally, you have to scale 
uh, a certain component in our uh, uh, in, in in the API manager deployment. So uh, yeah, so uh, we have we uh, in WSO2 we have the capability of uh, running our products as uh, Docker containers, and uh, each of these components uh, can be uh, run in a separate uh, Docker Docker environment or Docker container, which is uh, used by the uh, 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 which can be uh, used to uh, scale up uh, horizontally scale uh, each of these components when they have a certain number of uh, uh, load that, that's coming towards these components. Uh, WSO2 we had a, a solution called Apache Stratos and, and, and we had a sorry, we, ha we had a solution called WSO2 Stratos which uh, which we, which we are, was able to automatically scale and uh, uh, yes and 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 we can use the same to scale uh, our, our gateway so any other nodes in a ho horizontal ho horizontal manner yeah okay. so there's another question uh, is that uh, can the gateway manager also be a worker yes it's possible so it's just uh, how you um, virtually arrange the configuration so it definitely can be a work as well. Um, DB clustering, uh, we have supported uh, DB and uh, uh, MySQL and DB cluster so you can configure MySQL and DB cluster and uh, uh, use it our data sources and it should be Uh, also, we have uh, tested with Oracle clustering, so DB cluster, so it works fine. So you can use DB clustering with the AWS API manager without any issue. Uh, there's another question. Does WSO2 have Mesos support or can we run it containerized? Yeah, um, in these days we are working on MSOS support, but always we have Docker containers support with WSO2 API manager, so you can use it without any problem. Um, there's a question about can you shed some stats on any current production deployment of WSO2? So actually we can't give any clients information but we have customers who are using around 25 gateways with 15 key manager cluster along with store and publisher nodes. So we have that kind of a large scale clients and the some most of the clients use a, a fully distributed deployments. Okay, so there's another question. Uh, I can you expand on the ESP that you just introduced in the, in the second slide? I suggest you go any of the fully distributed deployment sites to show where does the ESP belongs. So actually, um, in a API manager, the API gateway it it utilizes the WSO2 ESB uh, functionalities uh, that that's coming from WSO ESB. So mainly the API gateway it's, uh, it it contains the ESB features that's related to the uh, message mediation and 
and and and the uh, features that's related to uh, uh, Synapse APIs and and proxy services. So uh, in now, if if we take the uh, API uh, manager, in in the API manager, it actually packs a set of features uh, of the WSO2 ESB with the API manager distribution, and and since uh, WSO2 has a component component model, we we do not write the the, the same logic to handle uh, message mediations. Rather, we, we are using the component features that's coming from the WSO2 ESB. So uh, that's the the reason that the WSO2 ESB was put in the second slide. Uh, but in in the distributed deployments and 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 in the different deployment patterns, the WSO2 ESB will come into into the picture as separate product, which uh, which actually uh, is there to help help the API facade pattern, which is like taking out some of some of the mediation and transformation logic uh, from the API gateways into a different layer. So if you take uh, if if I go up to one of the uh, deployment slides, so if if I take the full uh, cluster, sorry, um, let me take to the API invocation flow. So this is the basic API invocation flow, and in this flow, a WSO2 ESB will fit in between the API gateway and this the backend service. Now what the uh, the WSO2 API sorry WSO2 uh, API gate gateways functionality would be to take in the request, do the token validation with the key manager, and then pass the request to the WSO2 ESB, and the ESB will do all the transformation, all the mediations that's been uh, required in the business flow, and then call the backend service. The backend service will take the uh, send the response back to the ESB and if there's any transformations that needs to ha happen then the ESB will do it and sends back the response to the gateway and the gateway will send the response back to the client so that's where the ESB product fits in and I hope I answered that question So uh, there's another question. In a three-server setup, what would be your recommendation? So if if there's only uh, if there's a possibility to only have three servers, normally what we do is we'll have gateway and key manager uh, as a single. Uh, uh, we'll create a um, node with both the gateway and key manager. And there will be two such more nodes to achieve the uh, high availability of that gateway and key manager node. And the third third uh, server would act as the API publisher and the API store. So that's the best way to ha have a three server setup where you will have two servers acting as both the gateway and key manager, and the, and the, the third server acting as the store and the publisher. Oh yeah, I think uh, I may sometimes you may have a question about uh, because you have to pay for the servers. So in WSO2 we only charge for the active instance. So if you have three uh, servers, you can have uh, one active uh, key manager, one active gateway, and one active store and publisher. So you can have three other instance which and uh, use for the high value purposes which. Act, act as a passive nodes. 
when the active node is down, the LB level you can configure it to through to the passive node. So we only charge for the active uh, nodes only. So uh, okay, we have another question. Can I have an API manager instance running on the same machine that of a load balancer? So it uh, it's actually it's actually uh, uh, say uh, there are various places that you use a load balancer. So if uh, if it is a load balancer which is before the API uh, gateway, then uh, we do not recommend such approach because there should be a load balancer layer to filter out some of the uh, 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 attacks that could come into the system like DOS attacks and all this stuff. Then uh, there should be another layer to ha have the API gate API gate to trust it. But uh, the other reason we are not recommending this is like uh, the load balancer and the API manager gateway or, or any other component. So if you have both of them in the uh, same machine, uh, there will be a lot of overhead in that uh, machine. So because all the requests will go through the load balancer and some of these some of some or all of these requests will be coming to the gateway as well. So there would be a lot of connections being created from that same node and because of that there will be a lot of latency and, and a lot of overhead in that node. Because of that we are not recommending that approach but uh, it is something that is doable but something that we are not recommending based on the uh, because that will degrade the performance of the entire system. Uh, there's a question about can I use our company LDAP server in Active Directory for user authentication? Yes, you can use uh, any uh, LDAP uh, configuration with our SWS products. It's um, we are supporting Active Directory and all those uh, user store implementation. So yes, you can use it. So uh, there's another question. Uh, how does your WC2 microservices for Java framework fit into the picture? So the uh, microservices for Java, the MSS for J release, it's actually uh, uh, it's a lightweight weight framework that offers a uh, fast and easy programming model and it's 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 a framework to do f uh, flexible deployment in in, in uh, service oriented applications. So uh, in in the API manager world what the API manager does is expose these services as an API to the end users. So because of that, so if if the, if there's a backend service, it's whether it's running on uh, uh, WC2 app server or any other application container, or whether it's a, a microservice in uh, of microservice frame MS f uh, service, uh, it can be exposed to API manager and um, the MSS, MS F4J would be where the uh, backend uh, of the API manager of the uh, API deployment diagram is so. I hope I answered that question. Um, there's a question about how statics would be handled by DAS in case of cluster gateway. Do we need to point the, to the load balancer? I guess uh, you're asking about how the, uh, uh, the gateway stats will be published to DAS. So basically each gateway node will publish its stats to the DAS. So if you have a DAS uh, uh, in front of uh, front of with LB, you can point uh, give the 
that publish URL with the dash load balancer. Otherwise, all the uh, the gateway nodes will be published to the configured URL of uh, step published uh, in dash. So uh, there's another question about uh, the scalability of uh, DAS or the data analytics server. So uh, the data analytics server also ha 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 has scaling for capabilities where we use uh, um, Apache Storm and and there's and and you can have uh, multiple uh, uh, DAS nodes. Uh, uh, to uh, analyze your data, so in uh, if I give a in brief introduction to Dash, it it has data receivers, then da data uh, analyzing components, and then um, there will be uh, data uh, presentation layer. So this uh, um, data, so when you scale, when you do a scalable deployment of uh, data uh, uh, data analytics server well, what it does is now using a purge storm it will like uh, distribute all the uh, load of the uh, analytics into uh, into multiple uh, nodes so we can achieve uh, we can scale dash deployment also so um, uh, it's actually uh, been uh, it's it's a different uh, topic which will require a lot of time to explain this deployment pattern. Um, so um, uh, actually, uh, for more information, there there's a lot of information in our documentation about the DAS scalable deployment. And about there's a question about uh, are the Docker images public? Yes, if you can uh, visit our GitHub space which is uh, our username is wso2 there's a repository called docker file you can find all the our servers docker files there So uh, there's an another question. So uh, uh, one more clarification: uh, Is the ESB software app is included or embedded inside the gateway module in this case? So actually, uh, the API gateway has uh, almost all the uh, uh, ESB uh, runtime functionalities. The only part we we don't ship is the ESB UI. But in the API gateway, we also discourage to uh, use the API gateway as a full ESB because uh, that will be an additional overhead to the uh, that will be additional overhead to the gateway node. So the answer to the question is yes, all the features are available in the API gateway, but as a deployment uh, or perspective. It's not something uh, that we are recommending to have all the uh, ESB logic or the message transformation mediation logic in the API gateway because that would significantly uh, reduce the performance of the API gateway. Uh, there's, uh, there's a question, does the API manager support only REST? Uh, basically, we are supporting mostly the REST capabilities, but if you need to support SOAP, uh, uh, that we can have some, uh, add some custom mediation uh, capabilities like payload factory and convert the message and you, you can use uh, it as a, a 
SOAP conversation. So in that way you can use SOAP as well, but we are on we are basically mostly about the REST standard. So there's another question. Can you briefly explain your licensing model to use API manager? Is it free commercial use if installed on promise? So basically the you can freely use API manager because it's open source. We use Apache 2 license, so you can use it freely without any issue. So the what we do is, uh, if you need our support to, uh, in basically, if you deploy it in the production environment, if you encountered an issue or bug or something like that, you may need some fix uh, instantly. So at that time, you will need our support to uh, do it for you. That's how we. Um, uh, our, um yeah. So uh, uh, I didn't know what uh, I was, like, was explaining. So uh, running the API manager in 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 in, in a deployment uh, is uh, you can do it uh, on your own because the software is licensed under Apache tool license. So uh, the on so running it locally or in production deployment, uh, there's no license. The only uh, uh, thing that you have to be aware of is like uh, so we have a support model, and the the support model is is where the uh, uh, and if if we uh, if if you if you have Taken support from WSO2, and if if there are patches that we issue to uh, uh, to each customer based on their uh, based on the issues they face, those patches will be um, uh, given un under a different uh, license agreement. But uh, the for the d distribution that's listed in the site that's completely uh, open source and it's under Apache license. So. Uh, you guys are free to use it uh, any way you like. Okay, then thank you for listening our cons our presentation. Uh, I'm Harsha and uh, and we have uh, Janaki as well. Thank you. See you. Okay.